Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. I am absolutely jazzed about the show today because we're going to be talking with someone who has the number one web show in the world with over 4.5 million, yes, million listeners and views per week. The accomplishments that this man has is absolutely unbelievable. Not only does he co-host a show with his partner, but... He's also a publicist and much more. There's so much you're going to learn about him today. And there's over 100,000 shows on the internet. So when you think about this being number one with more shows entering on a daily basis, the projection is a growth of 39% in the near future over shows being hosted on the web. This is absolutely incredible. He's maintained it. He has hit it. And he is the fifth most influential radio personality globally. This is absolutely huge. He's a celebrity renaissance man with outrageous stuff that he shares on his shows. He is the king of cool and he is known as Jimmy the S star star T. With me today, <laughs> I have none other than a dear friend of mine, Jimmy Star. Welcome to the show. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. This is really cool. I, I am so excited because we have been talking for a long time and both of us are just doing our thing. And we have yet to get together, so I'm really excited to have you here to share about your current show, The Jimmy Star Show, along with your co-host and the new things that you've got going on that I'm going to let you be the one to disclose. That's absolutely perfect. First of all, I have to tell you, you are so like beautiful. I don't get to see you on the phone. So the fact that I get to see you in, in this video makes me very excited. And you look like a total foxy mama. Oh, thank you. I rock it. Awesome. <laughs> I'm Star, everybody. Hi. I'm the host of the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. And we are the number one web television show in the world with four and a half million weekly viewers. And we have a great time bringing on celebrity guests from all over the world and interviewing them and... We just have a blast, kind of like what we're doing right now. We do the exact same thing, uh, and it's just a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, and you are just broadcasting everywhere. You've been doing this now for how long, Jimmy? Um, the show has been on for nine years, and uh, we started out as a radio show, and we were very popular on the East Coast. And then I met my co-host, who happens to be my husband, and we're married, and I brought him on, and then we became a TV show with videos and everything. We were one of the first ones to do the Skype video thing, and we've been at like, so like a television show for about five years. So it was four years of just radio, and now we're at five years of like television and radio. You know, it's so funny you say that, because that's sort of how the progression has been for me. I started out doing radio, got some awards for radio. I left radio for a little while just because of um, it was actually costing me out of the pocket quite a bit of money to run my show every month, and I just couldn't do it, and I was still working. So when I decided to come back, and I was talking to the organization I was with, they said, I'm sorry, we don't do this anymore video is it. And we're doing TV shows now. We're not doing radio. Would you consider doing it? And I ended up jumping on board and I'm so glad that I did because look at where this is going and you were way ahead of the curve, Jimmy. And yeah. that's why you're doing so well. I was the first, I was one of the first streaming like radio shows, internet radio shows when it first started. Um, it was a fluke, literally. Um, I'm also an actor and producer and I do a lot of cool things. And, and I was on Craigslist, literally in Florida. I was on Craigslist looking for whatever, anything in the entertainment category, movie auditions, anything I could find. And a radio station had a thing there saying looking for interns to work, uh, you know, at an internet radio station. And they were, the, I think they were the, when I started with them, I think they were like the 13th largest internet radio station in the world. Oh, and, really? Uh, and so I answered the Craigslist ad and I said, hey, my name's Jimmy Starr and I really don't want to be an intern. I want to be a host. But I said, I know a lot of famous people and I think I could have a really good show. You know, would you be interested in, in you know, let meeting with me? And I went in and met with them and he said, OK, you know, let's give it a shot and let's see. And after my second show, we had so many listeners that he said, how would you like to make the show go from a one hour show to a sh two hour show? 
And I said, absolutely. And we've been there ever since. I'm super loyal. It's on W4CY radio is my home station. We're syndicated all over the world, um, but it's like a great station. And, and we've been there for nine years. I absolutely love it. I love it. It's so incredible the way things end up turning out. And oftentimes, and I want to share this with the audience because I always leave them with tools, resources, some kind of inspiration. And this just goes to show you that you never know what's coming down the road. You just have to stick with what you love to do. And that will just blossom into things you never expected. I, I'll add, let me add something to it because I agree 100%. I also think that people get hung up uh, when doors close and I don't get hung up when the door gets shut in my face. I walk through every door that opens and any door that's open, I go through it and create so many opportunities. Um, and the doors that don't close, I'm like, oh, well, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, you really have to look at those things as being a sign of saying, okay, I need to move in a different direction. That's actually going to be better for me. Oftentimes we really place a lot of expectation and hope into one thing and we sometimes get just really down because it didn't come out the way we expected. But yet over time we see, oh, wow, if I would have went down that road, it would not have benefited me like where my life is now. Or a lot of those doors open up afterwards. They passed on you before and then they yes. see that you're, you know, having some success and then they all come crawling back. And then you get to be, you know, decide if you're going to be nice or not and say, hey, you know, I, I so appreciate you coming back. Or, you know, if, if they weren't nice to you in the beginning, you know, then you can be like, well, you know, you blew your chance uh, and you had an opportunity, you blew it, you didn't, you weren't open-minded, you weren't paying it forward. Um, I, I totally believe that everybody needs to pay it forward. Uh, you know, people have helped yes. me get where I am and I think that I need to help people to, to, to accomplish what they're trying to do, if I'm able to. And, you know, I think if everybody would help everybody, the world would be such a, a better place and everybody could do well, everybody could make money, but everybody's so self-centered that nobody ever does anything to help anybody else. And I can't stand that. That's my one pet peeve. I know. We've talked about this too off air. And I agree with you 100%. When we work together as a team and lift each other up, so many more doors open that we would have never seen. Absolutely. Growth, personal and professional growth is just unbelievable when this happens. And also, it brings such an inner peacefulness about life in general. Absolutely. You know, and there's no reason why everybody can't work together for everybody to help to become successful. You know, like, like that's just, I, I don't know, somehow in my, in my thinking, that's just the way the world goes around. If everybody helped everybody, you know, to, to do the, the most that they could do to help, obviously you can't do things for people, but, but anything that you can do, like I'm, I'm kind of popular in social media and, and I, I help all kinds of people. I retweet them. I congratulate them on their successes. Um, uh, and anything that you can do to help, you know, light the fire for someone else who's trying to achieve their dream, you know, and in return, they always reciprocate, you know, and if everybody would reciprocate, uh, the world would be such a better place to be. I agree. And speaking of social media, I really don't know how you do it. You are a wizard at staying on top of getting information out there and knowing everything that's going on. I just, I really admire that a lot because I am not, I'm somewhat savvy, but I am just, I, I don't have it down yet, but I, okay. So with all of these things, you have your show and you are meeting uh, with a lot of actors and actresses at a lot of different events. You do acting and publicity also, and you have something else on the horizon as well. I have movies. I don't know. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. So <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of them. I uh, know. I know uh, you do. So, uh, so I'm a publicist and my company's company is called World Star PR. And we work with a lot of actors and musicians, some of them famous, some of them up and coming. Um, I have, uh, I, we're very good. We got named best entertainment publicist in the U.S. in our first year. Um, I have a business partner. Her name's Eileen Shapiro. She lives in New York and I live in California. So we do East Coast, West Coast. And um, we're really good. We're affordable. We're fun. And and actually, can I tell you a quick story about it? Oh, sure. Okay, so uh, I went on a ghost hunt, which by the way, I have a, a Kickstarter campaign going on right now for Celebrity Ghost Hunters, which is a comic book 
for one of our <gasps> celebrity ghost hunts. And it's, we're doing a Kickstarter campaign right now. We're a week into it. And um, basically, a couple of years ago, two years ago, um, Eileen Shapiro, who's my partner, but she wasn't my partner then. Ricky Rebel, who was a famous pop star. Um, Kudrosha Ona Karol, who's like the queen of the paranormal. And Ron and I all had met through a publicist. And they had all been on my show. Um, and then we all like started talking and we were all friendly and we were like, let's go do a ghost hunt and see if it, what we could do. So we went into the Kings Park Psychiatric Asylum in Long Island, New York. And oh, wow. All through the windows and stuff to do a ghost hunt. And we had a blast. It was hilarious. It's a very adult ghost hunt. Because okay. instead of like, you know how like ghost hunt, if you watch those ghost shows, they're all very serious and everybody's serious about everything. Yes. We not serious at all. I mean, we were, some of it was serious because like things happen. Like, like somebody called my name out and, and like one of the ladies we were with got like a, a cross burnt in her chest. No. Like, crashed into her chest. Um, so like really creepy things happened. But it was also funny because like we had to go to the bathroom and so like we have video of us and we're peeing against the wall and there's like <laughs> holes in the wall and you know Ron was making lewd comments about the holes in the wall and it was just hilariously funny. So we put it up on YouTube and it got 260,000 views. Oh wow, and that's so we, huge. So we were all sitting in McDonald's afterwards talking and it ended up that everybody met through the same publicist. And she was charging people $2,500 to come on my show. And she was charging people $1,000 for Eileen Shapiro to interview him for the Huffington Post. Did you know that was happening? No, didn't know it was happening. <gasps> oh, my goodness. So I booked like 100 guests, so she made like a ton of money and I didn't make a penny. Um, wow. So we were talking, and that's how we all met. And the next day, I got a phone call from Eileen, and she said, do publicists contact you all the time, you know, to help them do things? And I said, every single day, I said, I said, publicists are always coming to me. She said, me too. She said, they're all making a lot of money and we're not making any. She said, why don't we just form our own PR company? And I was like, great idea. So we came up with the name World Star PR. Um, we set up a Facebook page. We let some people know that we were doing it. And with, within like two weeks, we had 10 clients. And our whole pitch was to do it affordable because you know, publicists are expensive. So, yes. so um, everybody's got a different idea of what's affordable. But, you know, in Hollywood, a publicist is 1500 to $5,000 a month. Basically. That's a lot. Um, and so we said, let's do it. Let's do it affordable. You know, we did it for 850 a month. And people don't have to sign a contract with us. They can just come on month to month. So if they only need one month, they can do it. Well, most publicists won't do that. Right. And we started out and within six months, we got named the best entertainment publicist in the U.S., that's just absolutely incredible. So it was fun. And so it's not, I don't consider any of the things I do a job. I think they're all, I, I love them all so much. Uh -huh. They're all related. Um, it helps me because learning how to do publicity helps me learn how to promote my show, which makes my show bigger. Um, yes. You know, it yes. teaches you how to do everything. I love it. This is fantastic. Now you have another show, don't you, coming out? Um, well, I have... Well, we're working on Celebrity Ghost Hunters, actually, uh -huh. as a TV show. So the website's being built. The comic book hopefully will click. We're going to have a bunch of video clips that we took out of the different ghost hunts that we've been on. Um, and then we're going to pitch it to make a Celebrity Ghost Hunter show, but not, like a fun one, though. Not like these serious ones where everybody's all serious, but one that adds comedy. And what we'll do is bring in a different celebrity guest each week. Like we, we did two different ones and both of them had pop stars, but we'll bring in actors, you know, other kinds of famous people to be in it with us. So every week at that, that one character will change. This is going to be neat and very different and unique. Very different. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really something else that's going to set you apart from everything else going on. I think it'll get picked up really well. This right now, fantasy, ghosting, um, Things All the that are stuff is really big. That's yes. I mean, it's just huge right now. We're seeing some things uh, that are just unbelievable um, in comparison to the past. So I know all the ghost hunter people. I've met them all at conventions and stuff. Um, I don't know if you know, you know. Did you know I used to be a celebrity clothing designer? Yes, I did. And if you want to share this story, because. I've tried to recently convey what happened to someone that I was speaking with, and it was just like, you got to be kidding me, no way. I said, yes. So 
absolutely share what you did and uh, all of it because this is really showing and showcasing your talent. And unfortunately, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm really not happy about the way it ended. ended. Mm -hmm. well, I, I don't want to say it like that because we oh. can always continue, but oh, what I'm happened going, is just... I will continue. So I started out, uh, I can't sing really, even though I love to sing, I suck. And I'm not a great actor, even though I'm in like 50 movies, but I'm only really in them because of my promotional ability. And people know if I'm in a film, I will promote it, which is true, I will. Um, so it makes worthwhile to put me in it. And um, so I wanted to be in entertainment and I've always been a big fashion guy. Um, so I started a clothing line. I, everybody said, no, you'll never be able to do it. I was like maybe 23 or four years old. I hate people who tell you you can't do something. You know, that's for people who like are afraid to try, but I'm not afraid to try anything. Yes. So I, I had a little bit of money in the bank that I had saved up and I went out and bought a building and in a little shopping center, a little mom and pop shopping center in Fort Lauderdale. And I started making one of a kind clothes and um, within, I don't know, I think within like the first two years, I hit a million dollars a year in sales, which is pretty good for an independent little nobody person. Oh, like way good. Um, and I... I, uh, I did the costume design for Too Fast, Too Furious. Um, I started working on films, and so business was good. And my partner at that time, we went and bought an old hotel in Pompano Beach, Florida. And we turned it into kind of like a Fred Siegel. If, if anybody's familiar with LA, Fred Siegel's like a really cool store. I don't know if it still is, but it's a really cool store. And in the hotel, we, we made every single room a different type of clothes. And everybody came shopping there. Elton John came shopping there. And people would bring in tour buses and they would do movie shoots and music video shoots. And we made really wild clothes. And uh, I was featured in Women's Wear Daily and DNR, which is Daily News Record. That was like the men's version of Women's Wear Daily. And, uh, uh, and everything was going terrific. We did a big grand opening party. Um, we did a fashion show. Uh, everybody came to it. The whole town came to it, the mayor, everybody. And so after we had been there about two years, they wanted our building and they eminent domain the building from us, um, which is totally not legal. And uh, the way they did it and the kicker to it was that the judge who approved the illegal eminent domain taking was the mother of the attorney suing us for the property, which is totally illegal. Yes. And then, once she got it through the system, she recused herself. Um, oh, you're kidding. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, so once she, got, she got, once she got it through the system, she recused herself, and I hired an attorney, and the attorney um, basically took the case on, and we found out later that they were the biggest land lobbyists for the government, and that they took the case on purpose to tank it. So they took the case, worked on it for three years, on the morning of trial, they they stepped away and said, we're no longer going to represent you. Um, and then they gave me like a $500,000 legal bill that I had to pay. Um, and oh and my gosh. Pay, and I'm not supposed to have to pay for anything in eminent domain anyway. Um, so I, I lost the building and I own the building as a corporation. Okay. Um, so when you go to trial, if you own something as a corporation, you have to have legal counsel. Uh-oh. Um, but because they put a $500,000 lien, I couldn't get another lawyer. Yeah. It, I mean, because you'd have to pay for that as well. Right. Yeah. So I didn't have a lawyer. So the morning of trial, um, uh, the, the city made their case. And afterwards, then the judge says, okay, you know, uh, we weren't allowed to talk because we didn't have a lawyer. And then the judge, I wish I would have had a cell phone with me. The judge literally told the jury that if they don't come out and uh, fine for the city, um, that he's going to put them all in jail. And if I would have had a video of that, I would have yes. been rich. <laughs> yes. Um, it would have been so great. So they went back and deliberated, came back 30 seconds later, and we lost. And so, so basically I invested uh, like a little over $4 million in the building and lost every penny, except for them. They gave us 900000 um, but we had four million dollars invested in it, and we lost every penny, and had to. I had to start from scratch at like forty, at like forty-three or forty-four years old. I had to like totally start all over. Yeah, this is so wrong. And what they left you with was probably barely enough to cover the expenses, getting right. everything. I, I mean, that just they left me with a million dollars worth of debt. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. So you, you end up flat and starting all over after all of your hard work. So I, I really want to see you doing your fashion. I I'm really do. And I have dressed every major horror movie star on the planet. You know, Malcolm McDowell, the guy who plays Pinhead, Freddy Krueger, Lance Henriksen. I'm looking at pictures here. I've dressed Elton John. I've dressed uh, Dave Navarro, Carmen Electra, Norman Reedus. I've, I've dressed everybody. Um, it was a lot of fun. Everything was one of a kind. Um, uh, I, I'm one of the like I'm one of those people who tries to figure out how to do things out of the box. Uh huh. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm a clothing designer. How am I going to get famous people to wear it? And I'm a big horror movie fan. So I would went to a convention in Orlando, Florida. I took racks of clothes. And I literally like walked the racks of clothes into the convention to the famous people and said, anything on here that you will wear, I will give you if I can take a picture of it. And that's how I got my clothes to be known. No um, kidding. And then as I got better at it, I had a hotel room and I would bring racks of clothes in the hotel room and all the celebrities would come one at a time to my room and hang out and try on clothes. And that's how I was able to get so many famous people because I developed a rapport and that's how I got all the famous people to come on my show when I first started. Uh -huh. I opened up as a brand new show interviewing, you know, some of the biggest, you know, people, with, all the people with like stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and, you know, I didn't know what I was doing and here I have, I'm interviewing, you know, these people like my very first, my very second guest, I think, was Joya Bruno from Exposé and Exposé had eight top 10 hits. Oh, yes. Um, you know, and, and she was a very good friend of mine and Exposé is a really good friend of mine and and so I literally, you know, like right out the gate, I've got like these people. Here's somebody who sold, you know, 30 million records coming on as one of my first guests on the show that I didn't have any idea what I was doing. <laughs> this is really neat, though, because all of that took you to where you are now with your show, even with the, the loss that you had. I should say setback, the yeah, setback, setback that you had. And I myself and like it's going terrific. I love it. Yes, I really can't wait to see your fashions. Oh my gosh, the stuff is so wild. It's not even funny. Uh, I, I cannot wait to see them, and I want to see more. I'd like to. I can't. I cannot wait to see where this goes. I'm super excited about a lot of the things that you're doing, and you're really pumping up a lot of other people in the process. And so, I know that recently you've had a number of pumping up events that you have went to. Can you share a little bit about some of the red carpet events that you've been to oh recently? Gosh. Last night I went to two of them. Um, in LA, I went to the Beverly Hills Rejuvenation Center 15 year anniversary red carpet event. And um, I hung out with Dean Kane, who's soon going to be coming on our show. And I met the, some of the housewives, uh, the housewives of Beverly Hills and the housewives of New Jersey. I don't actually watch those housewives shows. I knew who they were just because they're in the news all the time. Um, and, uh, and then we also met Ali Landry and I met a bunch of YouTube stars. You know, like I don't, I don't necessarily understand the whole like people who get on and open up boxes and smash boxes and do stupid things. And they have like, I met this girl and she's got 2.4 million YouTube subscribers and she doesn't do anything but like stupid stuff, you know, and she's yeah. got, you know, and they make a ton of money for that. <laughs> you know, it's really funny that you mentioned that because yesterday when I was, you know, reviewing a lot of the things going on in the podcast world and PR world, I try to really stay on top of things. And one of the things that I read was this list about what it takes to have a successful YouTube channel. And it was open some packages of products. You know, I just look to do this. I, it's exactly what you're saying. And that you're thinking you and I, are thinking there needs to be really good quality content for people to use. And I guess I in some care about that. <laughs> yeah. And I guess in some ways people want to know if a product works or if there's something along with that, but there's Amazon review or Yelp or other places where you can talk about the different product reviews. In fact, uh, a lot of places now like Amazon are saying, you know, encouraging you to put the video up of a product you purchase. So I can see that there, but I mean, we're just, you're, you're right. We're just talking about these millions of viewers looking at things that are just kind of inconsequential. I, I, I am getting paid for it. I was just like, Oh my gosh. And these people that I met, they were so charming. They were so nice. There was a heavy set guy and his name's Cubby. 
and, and there was another girl and she had green lips and I was like, what do you do on your YouTube channels? And they were like, oh, we just do fun, you know, stupid stuff. And I was like, and between the two of them, they have 4 million subscribers. I mean, YouTube subscribers, I, I think are very difficult to get. They are. Especially like, well, for, probably because your generation and my, like our demographic is, is not like 20 year olds. You know, like my demographic is probably 40 to 80. Right, you know, right. Really demographic. And they're not savvy enough to know how to go subscribe on YouTube and to do Twitter and to do all those other things. So automatically we're, you know, we're fighting against the youth of today and the Snapchat and all those things that I don't really do. Yes. Um, so it's harder for us to get those subscribers because our demographic doesn't know how to do it. doesn't mean they're not paying attention. They just don't know how to do it. Agreed. Um, they don't find it, but they don't know how to do it. So it puts us at a disadvantage. But like when I see somebody, I mean, I don't even know what I would do. If I had 2.4 million subscribers, I'd be so happy. First of all, I'd be rich. <laughs> yeah, I really, you know, and it's funny you say that because YouTube changed its advertising monetization for those that are doing YouTube. You have to reach something like, I don't know, a thousand oh, followers yeah. and they've had to have viewed your show 20,000 times before they'll allow you to monetize the show. And that's not even guaranteeing a lot of money either. Right. That's a, that's the minimum. Like you need your, sh you need your episodes to be hitting in the millions to make money, but, but people yeah. do. Yeah. This, I mean, it's really crazy, but your shows alone, not on YouTube are still number one around the world. 4.5 million. Yes. And, um, one thing that's very cool about, uh, uh, me and I guess being a publicist and working with a great radio station who got me started is is uh, we're on every platform possible, literally. Um, as a TV show, we're on um, we're on Roku. We have our own Roku channel. We're on Comcast on Demand. Uh, we're on Celebra Media Celebra Media VIP TV. We are on um, uh, Comcast Roku Vimeo. Um, and then as a radio show, we're on iHeartRadio and we're syndicated all of, so we do all the, every, I think we're on 160 platforms as a radio show. This is uh, fantastic. And, and that, that, that exposure, you know, gets people from everywhere. We're huge on SoundCloud. I mean, I've got, I got 300 million plays on SoundCloud. That's fantastic. Um, and I've never really promoted iTunes, but I think I'm going to start promoting iTunes um, because it looks good. And if you can show that you're at the top of the iTunes rankings, I've just never really done it. Um, but I think yes. I'm going to, and I think iTunes, they just went through a recent change, but there's something within that change that a lot of other companies are connecting with. And it is, it is a reason to start promoting it. Yeah. So I'm going to start promoting it on, on iTunes and we're on, uh, but I'm on everything, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Podbean, Automat uh, Podomatic, Audio Boom. I'm on, I'm on all of them. So there is another social media. And if you're on there and I haven't connected with you yet, I apologize. But this is huge. The social media platform actually made it out to VidCon and people all over were coming to this. It is the number one downloaded app um, 2018 this year. And we're talking basically globally. This is absolutely huge. And it is called TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. Oh, I don't know if I'm on TikTok. Because, you know, I'm on a lot of platforms that I don't even know how they got there. TikTok. Yeah, I but maybe from the RSS feed. TikTok. Okay. TikTok is this app that people should record these short bursts of videos from 15 to 30 seconds. And they are, some of them are really hokey. And some of them are really good. And you develop a following on there just like you do on every other social media network. Uh, I used to be on Periscope and I had like a million followers on Periscope. Um, but then I stopped doing it. And I think that, I think I'm making them, I, I don't do a lot of video, little videos and everybody tells me I should be doing them. Um, but so I have been putting some of them up on Instagram. Okay. I don't do little videos either, but what I've been doing is my preview videos for the show I've been putting up on TikTok. And, and is that, and are people like watching it? I'm actually getting more hits now. So okay. I, I'm not sure if it's because of the advertising from my, the guests that are on the show, in addition to the other advertising doing, or if it's coming directly from there, I don't know yet. I haven't pulled um, it like when you get your statistics or analytics, it doesn't say that it comes from this social media source, at least not mine. It will say 
uh, iTunes, Windows, or uh, whatever, and then it'll tell me by country. So I won't necessarily know if it's coming straight from that particular social media source. I think that I'll have to look into TikTok. Like I really just started doing, I've had an Instagram account forever, but I never really paid attention to it until recently. And I don't really understand Instagram's analytics because first of all, I can't get verified on Instagram and I don't know why I sent them my Wikipedia page. I sent them, I even have a, a, a wiki page for Marvel comics for the Marvel universe. Cause I've been in like six Marvel, you know, comic book movies um, so I, I'm not sure why, but I cannot get verified on Instagram, but I don't understand Instagram. Like I posted something two days ago and it got like 36 likes only. And then I post something else and it got like 1500 likes. And then I posted a video and I have, I have, I have videos that have hit 150,000 plays. I have videos that have hit a hundred thousand plays and I have videos that only have like 60 plays. And I don't understand like how yeah. does that, that happen? <laughs> I, you know what? I don't either. In fact, sometimes is when I post something, I'll say, do you want it to go to your story? And I'll click yes, you know, and then it says done. And I'm thinking, did that get shared? Yeah, I, have, I mean, uh, it just seems really unclear about how it works. And then now they have IGTV. So you can run your show on Instagram television. I see it. I, I know well, a lot of people who are influencers on Instagram and they get paid a lot of money. I would like my Instagram to get big enough that, you know, I would be an inf considered an influencer on there. Well, I've got to tell you, Jimmy, you are an inf influencer. You are an absolute inspiration. I really love working with you and sharing all of the information that you do. It's always positive team building. It's growth oriented and I absolutely love it. I want the, audience to really be able to connect with you i know you're everywhere but if you want to start seeing some numbers where should we send them okay so i'm dr jimmy star on most platforms so it's d-r-j-i-m-m-y-s-t-a-r -M -M that's my instagram I, my instagram and my twitter which those are my two favorite platforms on facebook i'm just jimmy star um and then on place facebook i have uh the jimmy star show uh and world star pr both have facebook pages and, um, oh, and, and my blog, that's my, that's my newest thing. Yes. I forgot to tell you. Yes. Okay. So I just launched jimmystarsworld.com. I've had the website for years, but I never did anything with it because it looked terrible. And I had somebody go in and, and try to make it look better. And, um, so it's been, we've been running actively with it for about four to five weeks. And two days ago I got named, um, uh, the top in the top hundred by Feedspot, which is a big big corporation, they they listed the yes. top hundred celebrity entertainment websites. And even though I've only really been around for a month and a half, I got listed number sixty eight out of the top hundred websites in the world for celebrity entertainment. Congratulations! And that is a big, big, big. Deal. It is big. And I, haven't, and I haven't been doing that much now. I'm like all over it. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta like make sure I'm you know, doing stuff with it because Perez Hilton's number 25 and I'm not that far behind him. And, you know, he's been doing it forever. And he gets this is like really good. Six million hits a month. So I have to be getting, I don't know how many hits I'm getting, but I have to be getting a lot of hits to, to make that happen. So if it, if you guys want to check out my blog, it's jimmystarsworld.com and has all the information about my show. It has information about my PR stuff. And then we do um, celebrity news. We do horror news, movie news, TV news, uh, music news, uh, out and about if you want to see the events that we go to I just added an out and about thing and I'm going to put all the pictures from last night up there and um, and style we do fashion and style and let's get them up on Celebre as well yes absolutely yes 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 I um, mean thank you so much for being here today you're always an encouragement I love talking with you I'm going to have you back on the show soon because I want to hear more about what's going on and we'll talk more too about numbers and things that are that are happening in this area. So people who want to get on board too can do that and just give my hugs both to you yourself and to Ron. Thank you so much. And real quick, check out the Jimmy star show with Ron Russell live on Wednesdays from three to 5 PM Eastern time on W4CY.com. Yes. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And when this comes out, uh, you let me know and we'll do some press and put us all over the place. You got it. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. 
And thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Rebecca Sounds Reveille. This has been so fun. And if you think about all of the things that we shared today, you absolutely can use all of them. The uplifting motivation, some of the things that we talked about, if you apply them personally and if you're already in the uh, arena where you are doing shows, radio, or TV, thinking about getting into podcasting, our discussion can help you as well too. And I really encourage you to get on board with all the so social media, the blog, everything. Stay tuned because Dr. Jimmy Starr has a lot going on. So connect with him. Thanks for tuning in.